In this question, we are told that the velocity v of a wave in a stretched string depends on the tension t, which is in the spring, and the mass per unit length mu of the spring. So we are to obtain an expression for the velocity in terms of the tension and the mass per unit length. But this is the caveat. Look at this. We have to use the method of dimension. So how do we go about solving questions like this using the method of dimensions? Now we are going to be looking at that holistically in this question. Just you stay tuned. So we have, let's say we have a particular string attached to, let's say, maybe some wall, okay? And then we are told that for this particular string, if this is a string, the velocity of a wave that will be experienced in that particular spring is going to depend on the tension T. So let's say there is a force that is being applied, which is the tension in the spring. Then the spring itself has some mass, okay? And it also has some length, it has some length L, okay? Now we are being told to obtain an expression for the velocity in terms of T and mu, and we are to use the method of dimensions. The method of dimensions means that we need to go back to the base unit of the SI unit in which we are going to be having the mass, which is denoted as m, okay, the length, which is denoted as l, and the time, which is denoted as t, okay. So this we are going to be making use of to actually solve this question. But look at the question originally. What are we given? We are told that the velocity depends on the tension and the mass per unit length. So if you want to write that just like we do, in normal mathematics that we write variation, we can say V is proportional to the tension, let's say raised to some power, I'm coming to that, and then the mass per unit length also raised to some power. Now we are putting this as raised to some power because we don't know what the constant of proportionality will bring. So if we are actually to do that, we can now say V is equal to K multiplied by the tension raised to power A multiplied by the mass per unit length raised to power b. Now, our mandate in trying to solve this is to find the value of a and b in such a way that the constant of proportionality will have taken care of it. I will be able to find the expression for this velocity by using this method of dimensions. Now, we have some quantities that we are given in this particular equation. You can see we have velocity, we have tension, we have the mass unit length. So we need to go down and drill on how we, are, we can actually make use of the method of dimension to break velocity, tension and mass per unit length to their base units. Okay, so ideally we know that velocity is displacement over time and displacement over time we can just refer to as displacement is measured in length so we have that is L, time is measured in T so we have that is T. So if you want to put that in the dimension, we have L, then T raised to power minus 1. We are putting T raised to power minus 1 because we are expressing this just in a linear form, in its indices. And when you have division in indices, it is the same as raised to power minus 1, okay? Then we have tension. Tension, by reason of its formula, is force per unit area. So we have force over area. Now, this is where it gets interesting. We need to also further break this down to its base units. So force itself, we know it is mass times acceleration okay so we still have the area as the base but acceleration we also know to be velocity over time so we have m over a initially okay but acceleration we know it to be what the velocity over the time but yet we have not got to the base dimension because even velocity we just got here to be lt minus one so we can further break this down to say we want to put the dimension since we already have v initially like in this place it is l over t so we have mass, that is m. Area is length times length. That's why we have the unit as meter square. So that is L raised to the power 2. Okay. V itself is L over T. We have L over T. But we also have this other T. So that T will become true. We have T raised to the power 2. And then this L and this L can cut such that what we have eventually is here. We have one L remaining. So we have M over L T raised to the power 2. And that will be linearly m l raised to the power minus 1, t raised to the power minus 2. Again, the law of indices is coming into place here such that those in the denominator they will carry negative power. And t that is raised to the power 2 will become t raised to the power minus 2. So now we can also use the same method to find the dimension of the mass per unit length. By that definition, it is mass 
over length. Okay. So once it is mass over length, mass is m, length is l. So linearly, this is m l minus one. Now we have these three that we can actually use here. When we have k is constant, but the one that introduce that. Okay. So we can say instead of writing all of this equation now, we can put in the dimensional unit of each of these quantities. Like for velocity, we have it to be l t raised to the power minus 1 is equal to k, then t itself, the dimension is m l minus 1, t minus 2, but we have it raised to the power a, okay, and then the move we have is m l minus 1, also raised to the power b. So this is what we work with to actually equate the left hand side and the right hand side to find the value of a and b such that we will evaluate the expression for the velocity in this particular question. So I'm going to clear this right hand side, but this is how we actually go to the base of those units and then we will solve that as appropriate. So if you want to continue working on that, on the left hand side we can see that we don't have m at all. And what is the implication of that? From our rules of indices, we know that any number raised to power 0 is 1. So on the left hand side, the power of m is zero okay that is why it's not reflecting at, at all so we have l then t raised to the power minus one is equal to k we will try to open this bracket since a is acting on the whole of this entity it will be that we have m raised to the power a l raised to the power minus one times a will be minus a t raised to the power minus two times a will be minus two a okay and the same we also do here for the mass per unit length of the spring m raised to the power b will be m raised to the power b and then l minus 1 raised to the power b will be l minus b because we multiply this particular power with this outer power is also part of the loss of indices so as physics students you should actually have a very good grasp of the understanding of mathematics so here now again we are going to use indices because we are having m and m and from the law of indices what we know is that we have m raised to power a multiplied by m raised to power b we can say this is a single m and we add the power so that is what we are going to employ now to try and open up this bracket and equate the left hand side and the right hand side okay so we can say here it will be m raised to power 0 l t minus 1 is equal to k m here we have a and we have b so we can have a single m raised to power a plus b okay l we have minus a and minus b so, if you add the 2, it will be minus a minus b. Then t is just a singular entity, a to the power minus 2a. Now, looking at this and comparing the left-hand side and the right-hand side, we can conclude that from here, since the bases are equal, then the powers, they will also be equal. So, that we can have a plus b is equal to 0 as a function of the power on m, okay? And then, as a function of the power on l, we can see that l is just one here. But L is minus A minus B here. So we can have minus A minus B is equal to 1. Okay. And then for T, we can have minus 2A is equal to minus 1. So we have these three that we can actually attempt to solve by whatever means is appropriate to us so that we can get this. But looking at this third entry, I can say I want to divide by minus 2 so that this minus 2 will cut. And this negative sign will also cut. And I will find A to be 1 over 2 okay that is interesting if a is 1 over 2 from here b is equal to minus a and therefore b will be minus 1 over 2 all right okay i think that is getting quite interesting so if i want to go back to this equation that we point out of the expression that was given in the question i can say that means the velocity is equal to k Multiplied by the tension. Now, what's the power of the tension? It is 1 over 2 multiplied by the mass per unit length having a power of minus 1 over 2. Again, again, well, you see, our understanding of math needs to be very, very sharp. If we add this, that means what we're having is that V is K multiplied by T. This negative sign on mu will mean that it is over mu and then raised to power 1 over 2. You can leave it as this, but even I know that 1 over 2 as a power means it is the square root. So I can just outrightly 
express the solution like this. I want to erase this. With my understanding of indices, I can now say that this means that V is equal to K multiplied by the square root of T over mu. Now, this negative is what affected mu to actually come to the denominator. And this power of 1 over 2 common to both is what is bringing in the square root. And just like this, we've been able to find an expression for the velocity in terms of the tension T and the mass per unit length mu as given for this question. The good thing about this type of questions is that you don't just get to know them by watching videos like this. You practice, and the more you practice, the better you are going to become. All right.